The soaring inflation in Nigeria is affecting some more than most. And the people I'm talking about is the 2 million displaced Nigerians in the Northeast. And to speak more about that, we've invited the communications coordinator ICRC, Mr. Robin Waldo. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Thank you for having us. All right. Before we drive straight into the conversation, um, we have a report to play for you that encapsulates what we're talking about. Take a listen. now that was uh, one of the internally displaced persons talking about the plight that he's you know going through right now in, in terms of the cost of you know products and foodstuff um mr waldo you have been you know speaking and engaging with displaced persons in nigeria for a while now um tell us how bad the humanitarian situation is in the northeast Thank you for having us again. Uh, what we know is that there's over 2 million people who are displaced because of the conflict in the Northeast. Uh, the fighting has caused people to flee from their homes and they are faced with a difficult situation because they're living in makeshift camps. And some of these camps uh, have scores of thousands of people who have no access to adequate shelter or food or water. All right, so tell me, how hard is it for them to access food in those IDP camps? Since these people have fled from their homes and their places of origin, they do not have access to their livelihoods. So where they were, they had homes and they had also jobs. Some of them were farmers and cannot farm the land anymore, while others had small businesses but had to leave everything behind to flee. So where they go, there is actually nothing for them. They are there in a situation that... Uh, it's not very good. So, so whose responsibility should it be to ensure that these people, you know, are fed, you know, daily and uh, clothed? Um, you know, should they, you know, as IDPs, do they also need to, you know, work to fend for themselves or should, you know, it be the government's responsibility? I think the responsibility for every one of us is to take care of ourselves like you do, like I do, like most families do. But these people are in a difficult situation because of the conflict that is going on. And as the International Committee of the Red Cross, we are a humanitarian organization which assists people like them who are affected. So we provide them with food, water, sanitation, health care, all the needs. So our role is to step in when we meet this kind of displaced people all over the world, not just in Nigeria. That's what the ICRC does. Okay, and, and in the absence of, you know, um, organizations like yours, um, what would be their fate? And, you know, can you, can you, you know, paint a picture also of what, you know, the inflation is doing to, you know, the job that you have to do? As I mentioned, these people do not have access to their livelihoods because they left their farmlands or their small businesses. So they try to fend for themselves in as much as humanitarian organizations such as the ICRC and others are providing them with aid. So we provide them with uh, basic food, we provide them with water, sanitation, health care. But the, some of them try to do small businesses and uh, sell a few things here and there do some work like housework and things like that, helping people so that they can earn money to help their families. Now, these livelihoods that they are trying to make are very difficult simply because they are not in an ideal situation. But the economic situation that affects them as well has had a dire impact on them because of the raising inflation, the prices are going up of foodstuffs and those who are doing business cannot be able to earn as much as they were earning before. So they are in a difficult position. We try to help them to earn livelihoods also by trying to help them to set up small businesses, providing them with the grants and things like this. 
So you are providing grants to IDPs to make sure they survive and earn a living. Are you getting grants from the government? No, our relationship with the government is we are hosted in Nigeria, like in many countries where the ICRC is invited to work, to assist people who need to work. We work closely with the government, with the Federal Ministry of Health, with the hospitals and primary health care clinics. So we do talk to the government and we work effectively with them to provide where we can, because this is our mission to assist people who are affected by conflict. And what, what exactly is the current situation? You know, we've uh, you know, brought in a conversation concerning inflation and how the high uh, cost of, uh, of uh, food stuff seems to be making this more difficult. Can you share with us you know, what, what it currently looks like? Indeed. Uh, the, as prices go up, people who are doing small businesses will see that they cannot be able to buy as much as they could before meaning they cannot sell as much as they could, meaning that they cannot earn as much as they could before. This means that their earnings go down and they will have to have more creative ways to earn. So they would like to be able to do for their families like normal people in their places of origins do. But because of this situation, the economic impact of the rise in prices make it difficult also for families to survive. Families that are depending on a small income uh, that supplements the aid that is provided by organizations such as ours have to struggle. Sometimes the children might be able to eat while the parents go hungry in order to have adequate food for their families. So this is a reality. We are meeting people in the IDP camps who are faced with this exact situation that I have just mentioned. So it's, it's sad that, you know, what armed conflict has done for Nigeria and how it has created as much as over 2 million people who are displaced. But organizations like yourself, the ICRC, is trying to do their best to make sure that these people get food, shelter, clothing, and every other support that they need. But looking at the bigger picture, what likelihood do you see of these displaced persons moving away from these IDP camps where they lack, you know, facilities like hygiene and all of that, to be resettled to their homes? I think that is the best thing we would like for these people, to return to their homes when there is peace and it has prevailed and they are able to live there and continue to live out their lives like they should. Unfortunately, the situation is not that easy. There is still insecurity in many areas and the conflict is still raging. So people fear to go out to these places. So being returned home depends on many factors. First and foremost is the security situation. And this is something that is out of the hands of these people, but in the hands of the parties to the conflict. Okay, and um, you know, can you paint a picture, because we're running out of time, can you paint a picture for us of the things that, um, or the kind of food stuff you know, that we're talking about here that you need to provide? Um, is it you know, rice, beans, yams, you know, what exactly? I think you mentioned some of them already, rice, beans, yams. Uh, we also provide seeds for those who can do farming so that they can be able to plant them. We also provide uh, high nutrient food for mothers and uh, lactating mothers and pregnant women so that they can be able to be uh, nourished and so that the children can have better health. So we are providing what is needed by the people and I'm talking about providing it for scores of thousands of people just since the year began we've provided for over hundreds of thousands of people who were displaced and that's what we do we are also doing assistance to help them to farm their own lands and produce this to farm lands where they can be able to produce because those are not their own land sorry all right, Mr. Robin Holder, you are the Communications Coordinator of the International Committee of the Red Cross and ICRC. We well, thank you very much for helping us explain the plight of the IDPs. We we'll also use this medium to call on the government and other NGOs to come to their aid and ultimately to solve the security challenges so these people can find a place again in society. Thanks again for coming. Thank you. Yes, that's it for today on The Breakfast. It's a lovely um, and wet Thursday morning. We hope you've enjoyed every bit of the conversation. We're at Plus TV Africa on all social media platforms and our new channel at Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. Do follow us and engage with our content. I am Annetta Felix. And I am Osao Gye Ogbawa. Wishing you a very interesting Thursday ahead.